All right, welcome back, Crime Fighters. It's time for another edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted, the program where you get to help make Calhoun County a better and safer place for all of us. I'm Chris Wright, along with Calhoun County Sheriff Matthew Wade. Oh, it's always great to be on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. My favorite part's at the end when you tell a crazy criminal, but uh, yeah. it's always good to be we here. We got one of those coming up as always here. Of course, you've been doing a little bit of traveling and learning and such here lately. Yeah, I've been, been very busy. It's election season, uh, everything's going and uh, going and learning, been in Washington, D.C., talking to our senators and uh, congressmen about some problems that we need to fix uh, here in Alabama. So it's been uh, been good. Mm -hmm. But uh, some of that is jail food. Somebody might have seen some articles on that about yeah. 49 sheriffs being sued. That's been a big thing in, in the news here lately about the, the lawsuit, but a lot of people don't realize that does not include you. Calhoun County is completely separate from that, right? There's 67 sheriffs, 49 are being sued. I'm not one of those 49 in, in how we do food in Calhoun County and, and done it as far as I know at least since before 1995. Mm -hmm. uh, been, this, is, this is before Sheriff Larry Emerson. This is before Sheriff Larry Emerson mm -hmm. uh, ever took office. He never was part of this food bill either. Uh, in Calhoun County how we do it is we bid our food through the commission. The commission bids it to all the different companies. They make a bid. That bid is signed. It's a contract and they deliver food to us for us to feed the inmates. The correctional staff keeps a daily count of however many inmates we feed. We send that to the state of Alabama. The state of Alabama sends $1.75 a day to the commission, not to the sheriff at all. We don't see any money whatsoever. I'm not personally responsible for it, thank goodness, because mm -hmm. it cost us about $3.50 per day per inmate to feed them. So that's about half of the dollar seventy-five. So in the month of January, it cost us fifty-six thousand dollars to feed inmates. The county commission got about half of that back. So it still cost us, you know, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight thousand dollars of taxpayer money, local taxpayer money, to feed inmates in the county jail. We have five hundred and fifty something a day. So, you know, with that being said, I don't want the fi personal financial responsibility for feeding an inmate. We hire a dietitian. She tells us what to feed and how much to feed for it to be a nutritious, balanced meal. We do that. We follow what she tells us to do, and that cost is around three fifty per inmate per day. And so, uh, you know, I don't know what to say, but I'm glad we don't do that. Do I think the system should change for those forty nine sheriffs? I do. And a lot of those sheriffs think so too. E absolutely. You know, it's, it's not fair to put all the blame on the sheriffs because. State of Alabama started giving sheriffs this dollar seventy-five in nineteen eighty-one is when that rate was set. A dollar seventy-five in nineteen eighty-one. They have not raised that money since nineteen eighty-one. Is your grocery bill the same today as it was in nineteen eighty-one? <laughs> I don't think so. Absolutely not. But the reason why they haven't done it was because the sheriffs were able to stay under it and make money. The county commits, so the state don't want to make their increase. They don't want to be responsible for it because right now it's costing us three fifty. Mm -hmm. to do it what we feel is the right, decent way. We're not feeding yeah. steaks. That's a can that's getting kicked down the curb. And so. the county commissioners don't want to do it either because it costs it costs them money. So right. anyway. The long and short of it is what you're reading in the newspaper, uh, Sheriff Wade is not involved in that. Absolutely Calvin County not. is not Thank involved goodness. in that. Thank goodness. All right, so we're going to take a quick, well, actually real quick, we need to talk about yeah. the, what yeah. they've done. We got three arrests this week. Got a little excited about the food. Brings our count up to 4,116 people arrested, all because somebody was willing to be partners with us. Just as the food, we want to be transparent and tell you the truth and want you to be trusting and working with us, so thank you. And we'll get to work on finding some more folks in just a moment when we come back on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to this week's edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. First up on our lineup this week, William Santavaski. Mr. Santavaski, last known to be living in Oxford, he's wanted for failure to pay on leaving the scene of an accident. And meet Nathan Ford. Mr. Ford, last known to be living in Jacksonville, he's wanted on probation violation for theft of property first. And this is Michael Pearson. Mr. Pearson, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance. And we'd like you to take a look at Scott Cross, Mr. Cross, last known to be living in East Aboga. He's wanted for a failure to appear on carrying a pistol without a permit. 
and meet Jonathan Jennings. Mr. Jennings, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for probation revocations on theft of property second and theft of property first. And last up for the first half of our lineup, Freddie Lynch. Mr. Lynch, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a forged instrument and failure to pay on possession of a controlled substance. And that's it for the first half of the lineup. Stay tuned for the second half later in the show. All right, more bad guys coming up in just a few minutes, but right now we want to welcome Teresa Price onto the show, and let's talk about where you work with the St. Michael's Clinic, which is in West Anniston and is doing a lot of great work for the health care of people that otherwise just wouldn't be getting any health care. That's right. We are located at 1005 West 18th Street, so about 10 blocks west of Noble, right across from St. Michael's Church, a little gray mm -hmm. building, St. Michael's Clinic. We're open Wednesdays and Thursdays from 8 to 4. It's walk-in basis, so patients don't need to make an appointment ahead of time. And we're hoping to open up on Fridays in the future as we get uh, funding for that. We only accept those with no insurance whatsoever and who are uh, financially needy. Who would qualify. So and sure if you can't just cancel your insurance and think right. you can go get free. <laughs> if you can afford it <laughs> you can then you need to have it. You know that's that right. is, you know there, there's got to be a standard because I'm not sure anybody can afford that, That's true. So Good we'll point. <laughs> we do encourage our patients though that uh, do make enough to sign up for Obamacare but if you don't make at least eleven thousand dollars a year you don't qualify for Obamacare. Mm -hmm. so so. How, do we have a large population of people in Anniston that don't qualify? Yes, there are a large portion of people, and I don't know the exact uh, mm -hmm. numbers on that, but you, they're either underemployed, they don't work enough hours, make enough money to qualify for Obamacare, or they can't work, but they haven't yet received disability. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we have quite a, quite a large... A lot of different reasons. For a lot that. of different reasons, yeah. All right, so what are some of the things that you're seeing on a, a daily basis at the clinic, when somebody walks in the door, what 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 might you be seeing? We see anything from people that need acute care. Lately, of course, we've been seeing a lot of the flu, uh, to people with chronic health needs, people with diabetes and hypertension, thyroid issues. Uh, we even see people with cancer, and then we try to tr get them on emergency Medicaid. So we see the whole the whole gamut. And we do minor lumps and bumps, surgery that only requires uh, local anesthesia. We'll do those. We'll help people with abscesses, that kind of thing. Uh, if people need surgery, we try to find them uh, a way to get that done. There are some wonderful local surgeons who volunteer their time. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, we try to get them to UAB. Is there any cost for the patients? At our clinic, no. Mm -hmm. Our clinic is free. We do not offer direct prescription assistance, which means uh, if patients would bring a prescription to us, we can't do anything about that. But for the patients who see me, after I finish the evaluation and decide what medicines they need, I try to choose medicines that are on the public's free list or the Winn-Dixie or Walmart $4 list. Mm -hmm. Or we also have a, uh, an organization called AmeriCares, which donates a lot of medicine to us. And that medicine will give out for free. Uh I'm glad you brought up that the cost of the medicine and, and sending people to a place where you know what the price is going to be because that, that's where a lot of people really get stuck. They'll go to just whatever pharmacy is convenient for them and they may be paying many times the mm -hmm. same pri price of what somebody else is paying at a different pharmacy for the exact same medication. That's right, and a lot of my patients don't have access daily to the internet, so they couldn't look up the cheapest way to get their medicine. So if we they even realize that, that a lot of people wouldn't realize that it's going to be that different. That's right, and they can end up paying fifty dollars at one place, and it might be free at another. Or in some cases, I've heard of several hundred dollars mm -hmm. for something that would have been fifty. Also, we make use of our partnership with Interfaith Ministries. They have a program called Senior RX, and if we send, if I prescribe a fancy newer medication that the patient might really need, an older generic won't work. Mm -hmm. They can take that prescription there and to the Senior Rx program, and a woman named Kathy Gaines will help them fill out paperwork so that the pharmacies, the pharmaceutical companies, will actually pay uh, for those patients to get their medicine for free. So even if somebody is in a situation where they already know what their diagnosis is, but they're having difficulty paying for the medicine to keep up, 
it could still be worth their while to stop by and, and get some information from you. Yes, or at least if, as long as they qualify for our services. Right. If, they are, um, if, if they're needy and they don't have any insurance, then we would be glad to see them and help them. Especially those, we see a lot of patients who are coming out of the hospital from either the ER or one of the other floors at the hospital with a lot of prescriptions that they don't know how to fill or they can't fill and they don't have a primary care provider because they went to the ER because they, they can't mm -hmm. afford insurance. We welcome them to come to us and let us be your primary care provider if you don't have insurance and let us help you with those prescriptions. And Sheriff, I know some of the people that uh, end up being clients of yours get there in part because they get desperate and don't realize that help is there for them. That, that is always true. You know, just before we started the show, I was talking with a mother who was upset that her son has a drug problem, but he also has some medical needs. So having a place, a resource to send them to is a good thing. All right, well, we need to take a quick break, but we've got plenty more to discuss. We will do that when we come back after the uh, second half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the second half of our lineup. First up this half, Christopher Reed. Mr. Reed, last known to be living in Alexandria, he's wanted for a failure to appear on possession of marijuana second. And take a look at Joshua Curley. Mr. Curley, last known to be living in Aniston, he's wanted for failure to appear on tampering with physical evidence and failure to appear on promoting prison contraband. And meet Tiffany Dewberry. Mr. Miss Dewberry, last known to be living in Alexandria, she's wanted for failure to appear on use and possession of drug paraphernalia. And this is James Lee. Mr. Lee, last known to be living in Alexandria, he's wanted for probation revocations on possession of a controlled substance use and possession of drug paraphernalia. And meet Beverly Couch, Miss Couch, last known to be living in Aniston, she's wanted for failure to appear on theft of property fourth. And this is Michael Fleming. He's the last one up in our lineup this week. He's from Aniston, Alabama, and he is wanted for probation violation on possession of a controlled substance and possession of marijuana and assault second. That's it for the crime or for the our lineup this week. If you know the whereabouts of these folks, please give us a call at Crime Stoppers. That number 256-238-1414. All right, we'll have the Crime Stoppers segment of the show in just a few minutes. Also our crazy criminal of the week. But right now we're talking with Teresa Price from the St. Michael's Clinic in Anniston. And uh, Teresa, I understand that a lot of your clients end up being people that are the same clients as the sheriff and, and sometimes quite often actually part of their issue is because they're just getting released. Yes, when you get incarcerated you lose your Medicaid and so a lot of these patients will come out of jail with nothing, not even an ID and definitely not their Medicaid or any of their government benefits anymore and they're having a hard time getting a job or unemployed and so they fit right into our our mm -hmm. profile of the of the patients that we like to help and so they're welcome to come to us and we will help them get on their meds stay on their meds I know that's something that you care about a lot sheriff is, is not just taking care of them while they're in your custody but making sure that they have an opportunity to succeed after they leave the Calhoun County Jail that's kind of the whole plan you don't want them to come back so if you mm -hmm. don't help them get on their feet uh, the chances of them coming back is going to be is greatly uh, uh, not gonna say improved but greatly increased so, you know, the whole goal is to get people out in the community, out in society, being good, productive citizens. So if we can give them a, a hand up and try to get them straightened out where they can go get the medication they need. And some of it uh, could be a medication that would help them uh, on a mental basis to mm -hmm. keep them to make the right decisions where they wouldn't make a decision based on a mental illness. So. And Teresa, you do coordinate some and communicate with, with the jail, don't you? Yes. And also with mental health services, a lot of the patients end up there, but they're... Um, there's a long waiting list to get in to see a counselor or the psychiatrist there and so in the meantime we like to pr uh, provide them with their mental health medicines and make sure that they stay on their meds make sure they can afford the meds that they are prescribed at mental health services All right, so are there a lot of people in the community that could benefit from what you're doing that just don't know every day I have patients who come in and say I had no idea that you existed so that's part of the reason that I was happy to come here mm -hmm. today and just get the word out that we're there if you are uninsured and if you are financially in need and you meet the criteria come all you need is your ID and we'll help you out so some people may have tuned in after the opening segment here so who does qualify for services you have to have absolutely no insurance so you can't have Medicaid 
anything, absolutely uninsured medically. Mm -hmm. And you have to meet the uh, standard guidelines of uh, uh, poverty, which I believe is t somewhere around 26000 a year or less if you're a single person. And then it goes up from there if you have dependents. Mm -hmm. So that can be found online, I'm pretty sure. And, and where can they find you? at 1005 West 18th Street, across from St. Michael's Church, little gray building, uh, about 10 blocks west of Noble on 18th Street. And we are open Wednesdays and Thursdays. Walk in, don't need an appointment. From eight to four, we take our last appointment at three so that we can finish by four. And then the first Friday of every month we're open. And we're hoping to open every Friday of the month once we get the funding. Are there any misconceptions in the community about what you do? People misunderstand what, uh, what the clinic is about? I don't think so. I think they just don't know we're there. Mm -hmm. once, once they come, we, we get a lot of positive response about, uh, uh, about the clinic. It really, we treat you as, as you'd be treated at a private physician's um, office. We've got a waiting room, we've got staff, they're all volunteer. There's only two paid staff, which would be myself and the administrator. Everybody else that they will see are volunteers, from nurses to the pharmacist to the um, bookkeeper and the people up front. But we try to treat you like a person of value because we know you have value in Christ's eyes and so you are valuable to us and we want to treat you with dignity and respect and help in any way that we can. Right, and even if somebody comes in with a medical condition that you're not able to fix or help them, mm -hmm. you can at least help get them to somebody who can. Yes sir, we have a lot of uh, of ways of connecting people to services that they will need, even if it's referrals to UAB's charity program to get them specialized uh, treatment out at UAB. I know a lot of people don't that need your services don't have access to the internet, but for people who do, is there a way that they can find you online, or is it pretty much call or show up? Call or show up? Would I? I we may have a Facebook page, but if we do, I don't know. <laughs> My administrator would know more about that. But and, yes, and our phone number. it wouldn't have all the information you need on it. Yes, our phone number is 256-236-6060. 6060, 6060. Yes. 6060. Yeah. That's going to get confusing for the sheriff. That's a lot like the sheriff's yeah. office number. It is. We won't say what that one is because that would just confuse people. 236-6060. Teresa, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right. We will be back in just a few moments. The sheriff and I will. We'll have the Crime Stoppers segment of the show and our Crazy Criminal of the Week on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the Crime Stoppers portion of our show where we ask you to help our investigators with the following cases. First up, on January 27th, the Pleasant Valley School was burglarized. They got away with a Samsung television, DeWalt blower, and charger were taken from that location. And sometime on January 28th, uh, this home and a storage building on Old Gadsden Highway in Piedmont were burglarized. They got away with a lawnmower, two DVD players, cell phone, and three heaters. And sometime between January 28th and January 29th, someone illegally entered into a business facility on Highway 431. A hypertherm plasma cutter and a torch set cart with bottles were stolen from that location. And between January 28th and February 1st, an unknown person broke into a mobile home house and a vehicle at this residence on Duggar Mountain Road. A radiator was taken from that location. And on February 2nd, a residence on Old Piedmont Gadsden Highway in Piedmont was broken into. They got away with three shotguns and two handguns. And on February 4th, this white male entered a business on Chakalaka Road and stole many grocery items. And sometime between February 3rd and February 4th, two vehicles were broken into on Westwood Drive in Alexandria. A blue duffel bag with fishing lures was taken along with a backpack and an Adidas duffel bag. And last up in our, line, in our Crime Stoppers portion this week, on the evening of February 5th, or early morning of February 6th, someone burglarized two businesses on Highway 77 in Ohatchee. They got away with a compressor and a DeVault battery charger and battery were taken from that location. If you know anything about these cases, and we hope you do, please give us a call at Crime Stoppers, that number 256-238-1414. Remember, we want your information and not your name. Stop it! You're so stupid! All right, our crazy criminal of the week, Sheriff. Uh, this just seems odd, but uh, she went to jail for baptizing her daughter. Hmm. 
and you probably already figured out this is a custody issue. She's a mother in North Carolina. The father has the rights for making all these type of decisions for her according to the court. So she was found in contempt of court for baptizing the daughter without the father being a part of that. I Not as funny as some of our crazy criminals. No, it just, <laughs> just seems real sad in today's that, world that, uh, wow, I, I don't really know what to say to that. But uh, I don't think it was the father didn't want the child baptized, but he didn't want to be left out of it. Well, you know, and I understand that, but too many times when people, when uh, adults get divorced, they use their children yep. as uh, as stones to throw at each other, and and the, all that's going to do is hurt that child, and that child will one day wake up and realize both their parents. Um, were what they were doing and it's going to hurt their relationship and and, and both of those parents are probably completely convinced in their own minds that, that they are doing what is best for the child take a step back ask some people because you know, when you're in that situation you can't see and think clearly ask some people you know should I give a little leeway on this or yeah you know probably give them a pass on that one mm -hmm. you know uh, and I don't know it's hard to say because we don't know all the details but uh, you know, if parents need to love their children and put the children first, if you really put the children first, then you'll take a little more from your ex or your, and, and you know, but a lot of times pride gets in the way and, and it when it's just really bad. I've not ever been divorced. I hope I don't, but, uh, you know, put your kids first. Yeah, please do. All right, that's all the time that we have for this week. We'll be looking for you again next week, but hopefully not in the lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted.